Hello there guys, hi to see you. I uh, just wanted to reach out to you and say hi. I wanted to do this video with what to buy and what not to buy disc array wise on eBay. Doesn't mean that it's not worth the value. It's just that if you want to do storage in your home data center or your home lab, there are things to avoid and I'll explain to you why. Now, give me just a second here and I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I have a fiber channel 15 drive array. It's two and four gigabit bandwidth capacity on fiber channel, and it's three and a half inch design, and it goes to the Dell CX series three, four, and two uh, controller families of the EMC uh, uh, CX, uh, CX series NAS platforms. Now, over here, you have also a, another type of EMC product, which is actually a direct attach device. It is not fiber channel. It uses SAS protocol, and it's over on this side of the fence. And I'm gonna talk to it, and I'm gonna talk to this, and I'm gonna explain what you should buy and what you shouldn't buy on eBay. Okay, I've taken the cover off here, and I'm showing you a three channel bus fiber channel storage disc array for three and a half inch fiber channel drives. It is not fancy. It doesn't do much um, in the sense of notification, light, not, uh, light up or anything like that. And it is a proprietary style interface platform. Now, one other thing about the Fiber Channel EMC products is EMC really was able to sucker customers into really wasting a lot of money. And this is one of the reasons why I stopped doing EMC products. Now, basically in a nutshell, when you put one of these shelves in, you lose a series of disks for the flare code. That's right, you lose a series of disks to handle software for the disk array. And all the communication for the storage capacity is done via by those disks that are on this side. Now imagine that you have a specific requirement for storage, but every single disk array you've got, you're losing disk capacity to run some proprietary software of EMC. And this is a rinse and repeat. So if you have a rack full of these chassis all the way to the top, you have 30 or 40 or 50 discs out of commission just doing flare code. This is a piece of crap, in my opinion. That is my professional opinion because it is incredibly wasteful. Over the years, as I supported different EMC platforms, VNXs, CXs, and so on, um, I found out that EMC was all about getting you to waste money on discs that had no real direct value of storage capacity. But... There was a shining little star out there, and on that very same platform, they had these performance arrays, which were SAS only, and this is SSD, as you can see. They've got a little tiny SSD in here. You know, it's a two terabyte drive, and, you know, it's in there, and I'm setting this up for multi-channel busing, which basically means I put a few disks here, and then I put a few disks here, and then a few disks here. I don't fill them up in order. That's not a value. That would be for something more like a, an Isilon series chassis where disk busing is based on each individual slot. Not in this case. In this case, channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3 all have their segmented traffics on the cable. So you get more overall performance. This is a great solution to buy. And I'll show you on the back end how you know what the right thing to get. So this will be a little convoluted as I do this, but hopefully it will make sense to you. But before I go there, one last thing. The thing about EMC that is really unfortunate, and it became worse and worse and worse, uh, to the point where EMC realized that their market was no longer going to be sustainable, they turned around and they sold EMC off to Dell. Now, Dell is actually helping to turn the wasteful strategies of you buy stuff you can't use, so you can use some of it down the road. They're actually starting to transition them into a more cleaner format, which will hopefully give that fourth generation of EMC platforms the ability to provide what's needed to be provi provided for for the customers in the future. But I would buy these kind of platforms any day. Now this is absolutely comparable to the DS series and um, better than the, the three pars, at least generational wise, because the three pars have their own issues 
uh, due to some proprietary controller interfacing. But when you want to go and you want to get something really decent and you see this EMC gear out here, make sure you do your research before you buy. Because this is applicable to any server chassis you have out there, like this 910 here I've got. Uh, not a problem. This is so proprietorialized, pretty much useless. Um, you have to buy a great deal of, of additional hardware, and you have to set up a separate fabric network called Fiber Channel, and you would have to use that with interface network cards to plug into your servers so that you could get to this disk space. But too bad you only get, you know, two batches of 10 disks. You can't use the first batch because they're dedicated for the array. And uh, so, kind of wasteful. So know what you're looking at, or do your research before you buy. Very important. And uh, with that, I'll have you guys take a look at the back panels here. Okay, so this is off the back side of the three and a half inch fiber channel based interface chassis. And um, as you can see, this has a normal phone line terminal output. That's for telemetry. And this one here also is there for the secondary controller. And it's a redundant bus. Uh, because it's a redundant bus, obviously it has the actual uh, functionality of channel 1 and channel 2 for redundancy. So they're looped back between each other. So if this connection went down, you still had the option of pathing through the alternate connection pathway. Now, I've removed this, and if you look, you'll see how proprietary that interface is. And they did it on purpose. EMC did not want anybody reusing their hardware. And as you can see here, this has what we call a, a three-way channel set busing. Now, the three-way channel busing has a value. Basically, the value is the fact that I am busing through two pathways, which are right here. But I can also, in turn, bus to my alternate controller interfaces, which is at present on the, on the uh, logic board. So since they both have pathways, they can both route the same data, and they do it in, in basic paired sync. Now, with that being the case, this controller is nothing more than a fiber channel internal segmented switch type technology that's localized internally for the disk themselves, because these are fiber channel drives. So that's an important detail to also remember. So the redundancy pathways here, if you notice, is two and two, and two and two. So hence here, we have two and two, and then internally to these guys, two and two. This gives it the ability to have complete four over by redundancy also known as a crossover double x redundancy model just like the fiber channel switch models so if you do find yourself at a place or a capacity where you can get your hands on one of these you're going to have a, uh, you're going to require a lot more hardware than just a simple disc array and you're going to lose a lot of discs in the process of trying to use this busing structure in such a way so the only justification I'd have for having such a, a setup like this is if you have to be proficient on fiber channel design imp implementations and infrastructures. That would be my only suggestion. Now we'll flip over here to the SAS. Now, here we have the same kind of setup, but not quite exactly the same. Here we have a power supply that's redundant. And here we have a power supply that's redundant. And then here you will see two SAS-based style interfaces which are not proprietary in nature and do run just fine. Now these are double set bust which means one pathway or the other pathway can provide po proper routing for data pathways but the key detail is this is a single fully redundant pathway. All right now here is the SAS controller. Now the SAS controller is not like fiber channel based controller but it does have the same redundancy filler of pathways as you can see here. So when this controller interface is put on board, its redundancy model is very similar to the way the fiber channel works. So you're getting all of the advantages and values from this platform, equivalency to that of the fiber channel, but without the added over extra uh, overhead. You're not gonna have you know the need for a fabric network. You're not gonna have a need for a controller pair and uh, all the additional hassle that's required when working with fiber channel. So now that I've got this back in place, you now know the values between what not to buy for your personal needs without, unless you really would want the expense, versus what you can buy and have fairly upfront costs 
and put your real commitment to your disc capacities. Remember what I told you about channel busing. You know, put higher capacity, fewer discs in, in the channel groups, and build your RAID groups that way, opposed to just building them straight across. Take advantage of the technology if you can. So this is uh, Brad Dyke signing off. I hope you guys got something out of this. That's why I do this, is to help you guys out. And um, have a great week, and I'll let you go. Bye-bye.